Shel Silverstein owes me money. A million to be exact. You see, every child yearns to be a banker. Hedge funds and stock options dance through our dreams. We play house just to talk about the mortgage. And sure, we watch cartoons to please our parents, but we all know children only care about consulting. That is, until the fateful day a hippie hands him a book by Shel Silverstein, maybe even Roald Dahl, and takes it all away. The pages turn and suddenly the dream is shattered, illusion broken. We're shown the other side and in an instant, all hopes for private equity glory die with our childhood fading out past where the sidewalk ends. And for that, I think I'll sue. Opportunity cost and wages lost, we'll call it. Join me if you will. But by showing us the inherent beauty in a weird and winding world, they took it all away, ripped millions from my hands. I could have peddled payday loans, stacked cash until my penthouse touched the moon. I could have been richer if I only wanted to. Shell Silverstein broke my brain, and I'm guessing yours too. We didn't ask to find a meaning in life outside of greed. Who wants that? Absurdity and silliness, weird new worlds taking shape inside my brain. I don't need it. I want my daydreams of beige and spreadsheets back. I want to be a normal child again, but they're gone. There's no putting it back in the box. And for that, my lawyers will be expecting payment by Tuesday at the latest. Yes, I'm grateful for their work, but now I care about all of that. So let's call it a million flat. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Niche Nonsense. Silverstein. Not guilty, Your Honor. That's not how this works. That's not how this works is probably the best reaction to a Shell Silverstein poem. One I'd bet he'd secretly hope for. When you're out to shake up the system, give him a little nudge in a new direction, that's not how this works is high praise, a sign you're closing in on the good stuff. If you promise not to tell my lawyers, I'll let you in on a secret. The truth. I'm starting to think I might actually owe Shell Silverstein. And it's, it's not a million dollars. It's something worse. Something money can't buy? They say what you do when you're younger shapes who you become. Spend time in nature and you love it for a lifetime. But it's a premise that depends on what you get your hands on. Digging through nostalgia in my childhood bedroom, I found a bookshelf beneath a layer of dust. And as I started to turn the pages in the books that little Ryan read, a story started to form. There were shelves and shelves of shell. And with every one I opened, I saw signs of what was to come. A weird little brain in the making. You see, Shel Silverstein changed how we talk to kids. He introduced a lot of us to a world weirder, wilder, darker, and sillier than anyone else let on. To a kid, that's freedom. Someone finally letting you in on what you've always known. That there's a strange little world out there just waiting to be explored. When I was younger, I learned that TV is broadcast to us through waves in the air. And look, you can't learn about that magic and let it lie. I needed to harness it. So I went and tied a string between two suction cups, placed one on my forehead and another to the TV, turned on an episode of SpongeBob and closed my eyes. Obviously the episode would teleport straight into my brain, I thought. I'm a genius, everyone will see. But instead of inventing telekinesis, I opened my eyes a half hour later to a hickey in a perfect circle forming in the middle of my forehead. And instead of global acclaim, I found furious parents reminding me of the family camping trip we were headed out to that afternoon. And see, isn't that a much better story than if I was a kid who took everything at face value? I'll take an imagination and a few wild misses any day. That wasn't how it worked, but isn't it fun to try and see? Look, Shell didn't tell me to try that, but Shell Silverstein let us free ourselves to explore. He's not the reason, but he helped. We need authors and work that treats kids' silliness seriously. So we can keep alive a little chaos. When the world loses its wonder, that's when you know you're in for it. Protect absurdity. Let it play its part in our collective imagination. You see, that childlike wonder helped foster a love for wandering about the world. Curious. It's something I hold on to more precious than anything else in this life. This surreal, fever dream loving adult knows how easy it is for that to slip through the cracks. How easy it is to wake up one day bored of it all. And what a shame that is. I see the pull. I fall victim to it from time to time. God damn it, I'm gonna fight it till the day I die. 
I'm going to keep that little weirdo going. What a better world it is when you know that magic hides beneath and possibility thrives. Maybe this is aspirational and to some I'm already on an express train to boring, but at least when I go quiet and I stare off into the distance, worlds still form. Full conversations and impossible futures fill reality silence. It's why I love hiking. I get to go two places at once. What a gift an imagination is. And Shel Silverstein was one of the first people to realize I had that gift all along. And when I pick up this book, and my brain starts to hallucinate the stories of a long-gone man, I'm reminded of something more important than anything else in this life. He still owes me money. Thank you.